All right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, local realtor with Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I'm joined with one of my really good friends. We've been friends for a little over 25 years, Dr. Ahmed Al Masri, Director of Health Services at Apex Health. So, Apex, what is going to be sort of like your flagship sort of service that you guys provide? Okay. So, TRT is one of the things, obviously. We are getting training on something called peptides, and that's an emerging science. Uh, a lot of people are looking at peptides. Essentially, peptides are small pieces of proteins, not an amino acid, but bigger. As an example, the most common peptide you may be aware of, or you've heard of it, Ozempic. Mm -hmm. It's a peptide. What these peptides do is they give signals to the body to activate physical hormones. So one big popular pep uh, thing people are looking to beyond TRT is growth hormone. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, I've been hearing a lot about that actually lately. That's it. So the reality is, again, people want growth hormone as a supplement, but it's not quite safe to just to give growth hormone. Correct. There's only a small percentage of people who need that, who have growth hormone deficiency, uh, either acquired or from birth. However, peptides potentially lets us do it in a safe manner. So you give a peptide that promotes endogenous or your own body's growth hormone production, uh, and it keeps you at a physiological level, and that way you avoid having side effects of giving like injections of growth hormone. Correct. So that's something we're looking at and we'll likely be able to help people. The, the problem is a lot of these drugs are still off-label. They don't have full FDA approval. So again, we can't necessarily prescribe them, or if we do, it'll be very off-label. But that's one of the things we're looking at. Really, the third big thing, and I'm going to bring this back again, it's for the athletes who are using anabolic steroids and they have no guidance around managing the risks around it, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We're for that population of people. We're going to see you quarterly. We'll do blood works. We'll tell you when to stop. We'll kind of advise you uh, in a harm reduction fashion. We know you're going to do it. Let's do it safely for you. Or you do it safely for you. Yeah. And I, I like how you kind of put it in perspective like earlier about, you know, you're going in, you're talking to your doctor very much of in a, in a rush and or one of the things that kind of got me a little bit thinking is you know you might be feeling a little sluggish and this and that but it's not really uh, and you're not feeling a heart attack but potentially you could be experiencing something along the lines correct this is, so what are some of the ways that we can do prevention outside of the clinic okay so when it comes to the clinic at least it's it's less work for you uh you mean by health promotion yeah mean? Okay. So I think there's a lot of movements in Canada, but we're all confused, right? Every two days, there's a new diet emerging. Keto diet, Atkins diet, fasting, intermittent fasting. And the truth is probably all of them work. But in the reality, in my opinion, we're not getting into diets, but these things work for a period of time and then they relapse. So things that you're doing right now, health preventions, promoting uh, discussions around health issues is one way. The reality is people need to exercise a bit more and be aware of what they're eating. Yeah. A big part of our problems in a constellation of diseases, IBS, a cardiac health, mental health, is what we're eating or what we're not eating. I think we're in, our society is big on, unfortunately, uh, carbohydrates, and that's one of the problems that we're encountering. Carbohydrates and sugars, and then the sugars turning that's into it. fat. fat and... Correct. They're highly addictive. They cause releasing dopamine, so they literally make you feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's hard for people to stop or wean off of them. But they have very low nutritional value. They spike your insulin. They make you feel good temporarily, and then you feel a crash. Uh, so those are some of the things that we can, as a community, explore. And I think there's a lot of awareness around that emerging now. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing is, like, exercise. Exercise seems to be one of those things where everybody just wants to take that magic pill and not do it. Correct. You, you got to still put in that hard work. Yeah. You know, our bodies are meant to be worked. You know, we're, we're put on this earth to run. Hence why we have two legs and we don't have like all fours like some That's others. True. But And we're able to, but we just don't do it often enough. And then that's one of the reasons why we were Well, it's like you mentioned, it becomes a vicious cycle. You don't exercise, you gain weight, you feel sluggish, you're more depressed, you're less likely to have energy to exercise, and then you keep on going. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. in a very bad way. Oftentimes, I literally write a prescription out, 5,000 to 7,000 steps for patients for them to take me more serious. I'm like, this is a prescription, the same way I would be prescribing a medication. I would ho hope that you would take this treatment. 
Seriously, and, yeah. Seriously, and sometimes people do, and sometimes people lack the motivation to do that. Yeah. What are some of the the biggest? Uh, I know we've we've kind of touched on like IBS and like a few others, but what are some of the biggest ones that you guys have been noticing in the last like, say, five years? In terms of what? Uh, in terms of men health. Men's health conditions, things like that. So libido is a big thing, sexual desire, erections, finding especially. I can even speak about personally, right? I I play soccer now and I'm aching for a whole week. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case before. Yeah. And again, it plays down to how often am I, like I don't play for three months and then I go play, I'm going to be aching for a week. Of course. You start becoming more consistent. It's Actually, your brother has a whole routine, which I love. Sammy, he, he does an ice bath after soccer and it works for him. It takes away a lot of his pains. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something that he actually got me turned on about uh, maybe six years ago. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it out. And then just the first couple of times it was horrible because you go in there and you're like, yeah, uh, I was in there for maybe about 40 seconds. I couldn't do it. But then and now I'm, I'm doing it regularly, like I want to say once a week, and it's roughly about maybe seven minutes. Yeah. Like up to seven uh, minutes. Uh, a lot of, I think, professional athletes, uh, they actually go into a cryo chamber after their exercise where it, it lowers their body temperature. And I've been told you come out, and if you have a joint that's sprained, that joint stays painful after the treatment. That's not something we do, but obviously we can discuss things like that. But there's nuances to exercise. We actually also have in our clinic roster, Mr. Fleury. So he used to be a competitor in working out and fitness. And now he's going to act as a consultant for people who are new to this. They want to navigate thing, doing things again safely, mm -hmm. whether with steroids. Again, we're not promoting that. But if someone's bent on doing it, he's going to tell them what to do and what not to do. And then obviously give them advice on, on weightlifting to do it in a safe fashion. I think you need a combination of aerobic and anaerobic exercising. So people think that, oh, you have to run a lot to lose weight. Yeah, that helps. But often you need uh, an hour of running to burn 300 calories, which I always joke, it's like one Kit Kat bar. <laughs> correct, correct. Like you, you literally would, would need to run a marathon just to like be able to go eat a Big Mac after. That's it. But if you build muscle, Muscle in itself existing burns calories to stay alive. So one strategy for weight loss is actually not just aerobic, running and aerobic exercise, but weightlifting as well. That gives you an accelerated way to lose body fat. Well, you your, your body, like the whole day is numbing. It's just humming. It's like it's, it's, it's working Yeah. because it got that little sort of push in the morning and it's like the whole day just kind of... We're stuck in a rat race often. People have work nine to five and then they have to deal with, uh, not deal, they have their kids at the end of the day. They have to, they want to play with them, do things like that. So by the time you're done, all the things that you have to do, it's eight o'clock and you're toasted. So I often emphasize people, again, it's think of it as a as a job or as a prayer. It's, it's, it's necessary. You have to exercise. It's not optional, whether you do it before you go to work or whether you do it right after work before you get home. And I, I ask people to make things that are practical and realistic. So if you expect to go to the gym two hours every day, you're not going to do that. Correct. But if you go 30 minutes and you have your gym bag in your car and you're ready ready to go, you're higher likelihood of success. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like a, a lot of the times for me, it's like the night before. Like I actually am prepared the night before. That's it. Here's what I'm going to do. I lay out my whatever I'm going to wear tomorrow. I have it all by the bed. So the second I wake up, I just grab my coffee take a protein shake, hop in yep. the car, I've already changed, hop in the car, go to the gym, come back, and I'm, I'm done. And then I'm, I'm showering, I'm ready to go to work. But that whole routine between the workout and everything should be about an hour, an hour and a bit. That's it. With changing, with, get, with getting there and everything, yeah. yeah. An hour and 10 minutes, an hour 15 minutes with driving, maybe an hour and 20. But that's about it. Yeah. It makes it a lot less friction, if you will. And then the less friction, the easy the movement is, right? More likelihood you're going to do it. Correct. I have three gym outfits in my bag. That way I don't have to keep taking my bag out of the car to the house and forgetting it and then finding an excuse not to go to the gym. Correct. I have every reason. I can just go. It's in the car. It's ready. When yeah. you make it easier for yourself and more, more practical, you're more likely to do it. And really what's more important is consistency. So even if you go to the gym once a week, but you do it for 10 years, that's better than going once, five times a week for a month and then stopping, right? Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is key. Consistency is always key with any sort of uh, exercise regimen or even like uh, if I'm trying to learn a new skill or if I'm trying to learn language, 
you know, a lot of the times we notice, like, you know, you and I speak multiple languages. It's If you're not using that second language, you start feeling like, oh, I'm forgetting the words. It's true. But it's, it's not true. really. It's like, again, it's a muscle. Your brain will pick it up back up pretty quick. The same with exercise, the same with anything. It's really just about consistency and, like, making sure you're putting that work, that consistent That's work it. every That's day it. or every second day or whatever. You, but you just got to choose that frequency and consistency. And you know, sometimes people, we help people break that cycle with a medication. So Ozempic is on label now. It's called Wygovi for weight loss. Yes, it's an easy fix. You take it. The reality, the way it works, it just takes away your hunger drive. It, it, it keeps satiety longer. You don't eat, you lose weight. Mm-hmm. But it comes at a cost of some side effects. But if you have someone who is overweight, they don't have enough energy, and they have knee pain from being overweight, you give them Ozempic for a period of time, they start losing weight, they start gaining energy, they start exercising, they change their patterns, and then maybe in six months they don't need the medication. So makes there's a role sometimes for medical interventions to break that vicious cycle. No, it makes total sense. And, and I like the, the point they brought up, you know, like the weight on the knees. Someone had mentioned to me before, and I'm not really sure if the statistics are properly or not, but, uh, you know, for every pound that you have on your body, you feel about five times as much on your knee and eight times as much on your ankles from a percentage. I've heard, I can't quote the specifics on that, but it's true. And then uh, as uh, sometimes I make an example, I tell patients, imagine a pregnant woman and how her back feels. You have three pregnancies worth on your belly. How are you going to feel? Right? I put things in perspective. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, that is a lot of weight. Every pound counts in terms of yeah. a and toll I think- on your body. And I'm glad that you brought it up in that sort of example, but at least with the pregnant woman, uh, the, the reason why they feel it is because it's a, it's a quick nine months. You're, Correct, you're but it, it's it's a lot of work on their body. Correct. And they, it's, it's, a, it's a hard experience. Yeah, but when you're gaining weight, sometimes it might be like four, five, six years until you get to that weight. Correct, and it's and, permanent. And it's or permanent, could be. and your body is like really just getting used to it daily, but it's also working yeah. its ass off, literally, at the end. Yeah. Because it's it's so much weight and like, you know, all of that sort of kind of comes up. But I've noticed this when I, so I've lost about 80 pounds from. I my, remember. My it's amazing. Top to now. And I remember this about maybe six months, seven months in. I actually put the same weight that I had. I put it on on a, on a vest. And I to was see doing, how you felt. And I was doing pull-ups. Okay. And, and I was running for the whole workout. I was like. My goodness, I'm a lot stronger now. I know that because of obviously like- You built you know, muscle as I well. I built muscle. Yeah. But, that, and that's six months. So imagine six months ago, I was carrying this weight and now I'm doing it six months later and I'm feeling completely exhausted. You're like, geez, how could I have been living like that? What the heck was I thinking? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, and like trying to do a pull-up was so hard that I'm like, well, obviously I couldn't do a pull-up before because of this reason. Yeah. And now I'm, you know, I've got the same weight and I'm trying to do, I did a couple of pull-ups. It's not the same, but muscles got so much stronger. But in the same token, imagine the difference, just, you know, Correct. 50 pounds would do, like just having them off. Yeah, it's true. It's crazy. And then patients who who are candidates for testosterone, you give them testosterone, they suddenly have, testosterone is an, is a, is an anabolic steroid uh, hormone, essentially. So it activates muscle growth and breakdown of fat. So... And that's why a lot of people are interested in it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people would benefit from it if, if it's clinically indicated. Next thing you know, you have the energy to go work out, do things. So that's one of the interventions that, again, could break a cycle and get you back to feeling well again. And uh, really, that's one of the prime reasons why we've considered Apex Health. No, it's definitely something that uh, is very, very interesting to me. And I've, I've been actually reading a lot about it. So when you brought it up, I was like, oh, I'm just going to ask more questions because this makes of course. total sense. For the average person out there, like what what are some of the steps they could take to prepare themselves for the treatment? Okay, so uh, I think the first step is, in my case, I'm going to talk about Apex. Is book a consult. Yeah. What we're doing now uh, for the people who are still on the fence, we have a thing called Discovery Consult. Uh, it's a nominal fee, forty nine ninety nine, uh, and it allows you to book an appointment with us. We'll actually do a complimentary in body uh, composition to give you that breakdown. And then you can talk to us and ask any of the concerns you have before you go down the whole route of treatment and this and interventions. Mm-hmm. So it gives you a feel of the clinic. You can do it either virtually or online. 
And then if you like what, the, the facility, you can go ahead and proceed. But I think if you don't have, if you're, if you have access to a primary care doctor who's willing to discuss this, I think bringing it up as a dedicated visit, right? So do, my advice, if you can, don't go in with six issues because you dilute the, ish, the time the doctor can spend with each Correct. issue. Yeah. Make it a dedicated visit for this, for discussion around this. And hopefully you can find, like you guys can work together and look into it, right? Yeah. And are you guys working with a lot of the sort of GPs around the city to like promote or... We haven't yet, so we're, we're advertising directly to consumers, but uh, we, we would at some point notify the community, the family practices mm -hmm. and the specialists in the community that we're around. That's right. And you did mention some portion of it might be covered with OHIP, like for example, the blood test and, and a few other things. Blood test, we also do an ECG on intake. ECG is not an uh, end-all be-all for heart health, but it's a good screening tool sometimes to pick up uh, called occult or hidden heart disease. So we do that as a screening, not routinely done. We do these in-house, which is nice. So you don't have to go to a lab. You can come do it uh, in our facility at your own pace. You're not having to wait in line. That's part of some of the perks that you have. Mm -hmm. So we do these, the blood work, the ECG, those are covered by OHEP. I've heard and I have yet to confirm military and RCMP uh, insurance providers have a dedicated health spending account that they can take advantage of uh, their discretion essentially. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of plans that have like a, you know, like a $500 spend or a $1,000 spend that you can do Correct. per person per year. Uh, and it's just like, it's like a blanket. Yep. Spend it on whatever Correct. you want. You want to spend it on glasses, this, that. Independent of the massage and uh, dietitian services, which should be included by, by your insurance. And we have those services to yeah. offer as well. And for folks that are like not really sure what's the best way for them to check it out with their insurance. Is that yeah. calling them, checking the policy or like what? Yeah, what I you think you, you may have to call them uh, and see it, explore that with them. And I think sometimes even if your insurance doesn't cover it, and this is a shift in my mindset too. I just be like, oh, I don't want to pay. This is a problem, Canadians, we have to change our mind. Yeah, you do have to pay sometimes for your health care. Mm -hmm. People are okay to pay with, and there's no problem with that, five, $600 to groom their dog. And that's something they enjoy. But change that mindset and apply it to your health. You You may have to pay a bit to take ownership of your health and get that dealt with. And it's okay. Not yeah. everything is covered or can be covered by, by OHIP. The reality is the system is, is, is outstretched and that's causing a lot of the issues. So if you offload some of these things, it could be beneficial, right? It, it could be beneficial for all too, because like, you know, for example, like if I'm going and do this and I'm you know, doing ECG and all of that, I'm probably not having to worry about the back end of it when I get a heart attack. Right. I've already discovered Correct. it. It's preventative. Correct. It's a lot more preventative. Uh, it's a screening tool again. And then if I have suspicions, we may have to do stress testing or stress echo, like actual uh, other investigations, if there's a suspicion for heart disease. Yeah. And that again, that's more of the, the reactive versus a, sorry, a proactive versus a reactive type of medicine, like you yeah. said. Yeah. And that's normally the, the best policy is like to just be a little bit sort of ahead of the curve, Correct. figuring things out. Correct. Like, you know, I know something might come up or like a, with age things come up, like why don't you just try to be a little bit more prepared at least. That's so true. if it does come up, at least you know how to mitigate the risk. A You're right. Bit more. We do provide services. Uh, it's not just TRT. So if someone wants to come in, they don't have a primary care provider and they want to do a membership like an executive men's experience, we have, we're available for that as well. Yeah. And that's something that we don't see quite often. Like a lot of people have been, you know, looking for a doctor, looking for, you know, is that something that they still look into Apex for, or is it just... They can. They yeah. can. Yeah. That's something we can provide uh, some of the primary care stuff, potentially, that uh, if they don't have a primary care doctor. Again, uh, as a membership or an executive style, ex executive style experience. Yeah. yeah. And for you guys, what is the main goal in your mind for Apex? Like, what, what do you hope to achieve in the next five to ten years? Good question. I've never thought of it. But uh, if I was to come up with an answer... We probably be want to be the location for men's health, right? If you think of, oh, I have an issue, okay, Apex Hustle is there for for you to to help you out. We want to be that resource for men in in the Ottawa area uh, or beyond, even right the, the the catchment. Because now, since the epidemic, we do virtual care and it's become more seamless. Yeah. Uh, so I guess in a nutshell, that the go-to place for men's health. It's amazing. Hopefully, it's not just the one location. Hopefully, you know, we can get you up going with multiple locations in the city and then really be able to provide that for, for men. 
at the end of the day, like to me, the way I look at it is health is the number one priority, should be everyone's number one Correct. priority. If I'm not healthy, everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, we have a saying that we just keep chasing, we keep chasing money until it comes a day where we're throwing money to chase health. It's true. We, we, you're always running around trying to get more money. And then by the time you've had the money, you've degraded your health. You've so burnt bad, yourself yeah. out that you can't even enjoy Correct. The, the wealth that you established. Yeah. A balance is always essential. You're balance right. is always key. And the beauty about it is at the end of the day, like it's, it, it's just longevity. It's giving you that longevity, that ability to enjoy the living while you're living it. You know, we're only here for a short period of time. Anyways, it's, we're all here on a loan. I call it, you know, <laughs> yeah. we're borrowing time or borrowed time. So might as well at least enjoy that borrowed time and make it as easy yeah. as possible and as simple as possible and fun, you know, being able to get up and do things, whatever it's it beats sitting on the couch, being depressed, being, you know, bound to a chair, whatever the case yeah. may be, get out there and do it. And if you can't, well, there's, there's ways. This yeah, Apex Health. a lot of people would like to, but they just feel like they're burdened by whatever. And we're here to help you kind of get out of that shell and get that sense of vitality back that you yeah. had when you're 20 and you're running around and you feel like you're unfinished. We're not going to get you to feeling 20 again, but we're going to get you feeling great. Uh, let's like manage, obviously, expectations. No, of course, of course. At the end of the day, like we're, we're not trying to shave, you know, no. some, some years it's off. It's not an anti-aging experience. Correct. Uh, it's more of vitality, rejuvenation experience. Enjoy the living, basically. Instead Correct. of Correct. necessarily. No, I really appreciate it, Ahmed. It's... Uh, Dr. Ahmed, thank you so much for being on the show. It's and, my and pleasure. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to discuss Apex and, and really bring it out in, in a good light for a lot of people out there. And uh, for, for, you know, I'm a huge health advocate, myself, a huge men's health advocate, as well as mental health. And I think this uh, really kind of goes hand in hand, especially because a lot of the times we do think it's okay, I might, I might, have be, I might be having depression. I might be, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just really your health. Uh, there may be something else be, going on. Exactly. It could be, you know, a possible heart attack. Or it could be a possible heart issue that you're having that's affecting everything psychologically. Uh, or it could be, like I said, a hormone, missing out a hormone or testosterone or something. Check it out. You know, you owe it to yourself to at least go out, check it out, and, and really f figure yourselves out and, uh, and do right by yourself. Again, really, thank you so much. Appreciate it for uh, the time and, and being on the, on the podcast. And would love to uh, to check it out. I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm really intrigued. Now. You're going to have to come pay us a visit, of I, course. I am. I am. I'm very intrigued. intrigued. I'm probably going to book something right after my vacation. Amazing. Thank you for taking the time to have me. I've actually been keeping an eye on your podcast, and uh, I think it's going to continuously emerge. You've been having great guests, and I've been privileged to be on your podcast today. Thank Appreciate you very much. It, it's uh, For me, it's, it's anything that we can do to help the community, to bring awareness to businesses like yourself. That That's are, awesome putting out really good good service, uh, helping out the community. Uh, the whole purpose of this premise of the, this show is really to just bring some light to the city. Ottawa is not a boring city. There's so much going on. There's, There's a lot of so hidden many. gems that we just don't know about. Exactly. You're right. There's so many great businesses out there that just need your attention, you know. And with that being said, thank you so much. If you guys like what you see, please don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can get all the episodes and you get alerts on every episode that comes out. If you like what you see, just hit the like button. Thank you so much. Take care.